Hey guys, Eddie the Magic Monk here. Last lesson we started drawing loops using Nazi Schneiderman diagrams. And today we are going to show you a different type of loop. Okay, so last lesson what we did was we set a number, sorry, set a variable equal to a number. And in this case, a variable called x has been set to the number 1. And we said if x is smaller than 30, we are going to keep repeating these two instructions over and over again while x is smaller than 30. Okay, so x is initially 1 because that's smaller than 30. We increase it by 2 and we print it out. Okay, so the first time we increase it by 2, print it out, so it's 3. And then we test it again. Is x smaller than 30? Yes, 3 is smaller than 30, so we keep doing. So we end up with all these numbers printed on the screen. So if that was the screen, all these numbers got printed out. Okay, so now I want to show you a different kind of loop. Okay, and you can compare the difference between them. Okay, so you can see that I have just drawn another loop over here. And just have a look at what the difference is between this loop and this loop. Okay, and you should be able to see uh, very easily that this loop has the condition above or before the two actions, whereas this loop has the condition after the two actions. Now, in this particular example, where we set x to start with 1, and then we increase it by 2, display it on the screen, so it's still going to say 3. We test it after the two conditions, so while x is smaller than 30, so if x was 3, it's smaller than 30, so we increase it by 2, display it on the screen, it's going to become 5. So in this particular case, it's going to give us the exact same output. Okay, so this loop, this algorithm is going to give us the exact same thing to this algorithm. It's going to give us the exact same thing. Okay, so what's the difference? What's the point in having two different ways to express it? Okay, now here is why this gives you the exact same thing and it's still important to have it. So to illustrate to you guys why these two different types of loops could give you a different output, I've chosen these specific numbers. Once you understand why, you can uh, come up with other cases yourself. So I have set x to start with 7 in both examples. Okay, now here's the condition. While x is smaller than 6, so notice how 7 is not smaller than 6. Because it is not smaller than 6, it hasn't satisfied this condition, so it's not even going to start the instructions inside the loop. It's just going to totally skip it, right? It didn't satisfy the instruction or the condition that has to be satisfied for us to do any of this. But in the second case, even though all these numbers are the same, okay, we still got x increased by 4, we still got display x, we still got while x is smaller than 6. Because we are not testing this condition until the end, we are going to start what's inside this loop. Okay, we're going to start it. So 7 increased by 4 is 11, display x on screen. So 11 is going to show up on the screen. Let's make that a bit bigger so you can see it. 11 is going to show up on the screen. And then we do the test. Is x smaller than 6? No. So then we don't repeat this loop. But the first time this loop is going to run, even though it didn't satisfy that condition, because we don't test that condition until the end. Okay, so that is the difference between these two loops. So this first one is called a test first loop. Okay, 
test first loop make that a bit bigger so you can see it and this last one is called a test last loop so there are two different types of loops uh, two different types of while loops that you could come across in uh, in a Nazi Schneiderman diagram all right, thanks for watching guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.